Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to this series of e-cancer interviews that we are holding with some of the leading lights over the last year, working on the understanding of the impact of COVID-19 on global cancer as part of the COVID-19 and Global Cancer Task Force. I'm Richard Sullivan from King's College London. I'm also the chair of the e-cancer trustees. And I'm absolutely delighted to introduce today our guest, who's James Glazeby, who is a National Institute for Health Research, uh, doctoral research fellow in global surgery. He's a surgeon himself. Uh, he's based in the UK in Birmingham, and he's also the co-lead of the COVID Surge Cancer Project. So James, a very warm welcome to eCancer. Delighted to have you here to talk about an incredibly important publication that you were one of the co-leads on. Um, it was published in the Lancet Oncology on the 5th of October this year, and it was called The Effect of COVID-19 Pandemic Lockdowns on Planned Cancer Surgery for 15 Tumor Types in 61 Countries, an absolutely extraordinary project. But James, before we start going into the details of what you found in that publication, maybe we can just take a step back and maybe you can briefly explain to the listeners uh, the origins of the COVID Surgery Project. What did you do with it? What did you, what what have you done with it? And who's been involved? Of course. So firstly, it's a, it's an honour to be here. It really is um, with your eCancer audience today. And um, so about eight years ago now, actually, we started something called the Global Surge Collaborative, and it was a response by frontline surgeons and critical care doctors and anaesthetists around the world that were looking to put together data about their patients they saw in practice to make um, bigger messages than things they could achieve alone. And so what we've done over that time is to look at high priority topics in surgical care. So death after surgery, cancer surgery, surgical wound infection, and to design observational studies and to create data and move those into randomized trials to support patient care around the world. So when the pandemic emerged in March 2020, uh, we had an urgent request from our community to, to do something in, in response to the unsolved questions around surgery, uh, uh, surgical oncology and, and uh, COVID-19. And that started with the safety of surgery and the risks of infection for patients, the effectiveness of some of the measures to prevent infections, such as cold sites or COVID-19 free surgical pathways and, and doing routine swab testing before operations. And, and, and in parallel, we, we really wanted to understand what the impact of delays or cancellations of surgery would be to patients with time critical conditions such as cancer. Um, so that was the COVID surge cancer project, which we're talking about today. And I'm excited to go into it with more depth um, with you. Fantastic. So tell us really at the very highest level, what were the major findings from this particular study that you published in the Lancet Oncology? And um, so we looked at the association between the stringency of government measures in response to local surges in, in SARS-CoV-2 infection rates and the rate of non-operation for patients that were promised a curative cancer operation by the multidisciplinary team or the equivalent in an international setting. And what we found, um, according to three categories, we had, we had a, a light restrictions group where things were pretty much business as normal, a full lockdown group where there was a, a huge amount of, um, uh, of, of stringent measures in place, and then a sort of middle moderate lockdowns group. And we found that during full lockdowns around the world, one in seven patients that was promised the curative cancer operation um, was unable to have that surgery within a median of three months of follow-up, but as much as six months of follow-up for some patients. Um, so that means either a, a delay, not having the operation because their disease progressed or sadly they developed metastatic disease or died. And for some patients that they had a, an alternative and um, perhaps inferior treatment during that time. Uh, interestingly, we saw differences across different resourcing contexts. Um, so patients that were um, waiting surgery in full lockdowns in lower resource settings had an even greater rate of non-operation with one in four patients not receiving the surgery they, they required. So we think some stark findings for policy and practice as we look towards the pandemic recovery period. It's a pretty shocking finding, actually. I mean, one in seven people not getting timely uh, surgery. I, I guess the question 
I would like to place to you now. I mean, so there's an enormous amount of detail in this particular paper. It's thoroughly encourage people to read it. Is what are your key messages to policymakers arising from this work, James? Thank you very much. Well, I think we've looked um, back at what happened during the previous pandemic waves, but the most important thing is what we can do moving forwards. And I'd, I'd say there's two key messages for practice and policy. The first one is related to lockdowns themselves and some of the collateral impacts of stringent government measures um, when governments are looking to to perhaps extend or reintroduce lockdowns. And I think it's important to say we are not in any way anti-lockdown. It is a, a critical measure at reducing population level transmission of SARS-CoV-2. Uh, but we have to take them into account of a, of a total kind of whole system public health view. And um, so actually there are these collateral impacts and we've got primary data here to, to demonstrate those. And um, so they should be considered as part of the decision making process when it comes to extending or reintroducing lockdowns in the future. I think the second thing we think uh, it might be important is that patients have suffered these much longer delays to care than they would have in the pre-pandemic period in, in several contexts. And, and actually, we didn't see an increased rate of, of unresectable tumours with, with delays. Um, but we do know that delays to care do reduce long-term survival. And I think we should have extra caution for the patients that have had uh, suffered delays during this period uh, in, in perhaps reviewing them earlier, more frequently in clinic and, and making them aware of the potential symptoms and signs of, of recurrent disease. Um, so I think those are the two key practice and policy messages we've taken from this analysis. Well, James, thank you so much for joining today's eCancer. This is a fantastic piece of work. I'm, I'm sure we'll send congratulations to all your collaborators across all the countries you've worked. Um, very important clinical message is there about follow up of patients, even if they are um, not margin positive, there are zero resections. I think that's a huge, important piece of clinical practical advice. And, and secondary, of course, the importance of keeping health systems open even when you're having to implement um, non-pharmaceutical measures such as lockdowns. I mean, absolutely extraordinary piece of work. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today and congratulations on, on what is going to be, I think, a, a real milestone in surgical global research. Thank you, James. Thank you, Richard. And a huge thanks to all our collaborators around the world without whom um, this would not be possible. Mm -hmm.